All right, so I like to lay out the old set and the new set of brake shoes. And I try to keep as much hardware in them as I can when I take it off. It might be a good idea to take a picture on your phone. Uh, but usually I can transfer the hardware over, at least some of it. And also it gives me a chance to make sure that the kit, the hardware kit I have, actually has the right parts and pieces, like these. I like these little twist nut whatevers. I'm gonna set them up there. Set those up there, set those up there. One of those springs. We got two of those nail pins. We got one new spring. And we got a little rubber plug for the back of the, uh, behind the drum, whatever that back plate is called. All right, so I look at it. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to move this over, and I'm trying to get an idea of where everything goes because it's a lot of parts and pieces. So what I'm going to transfer over on mine is just this bottom part. So like this adjuster rod, this uh, spring. We'll have a new spring from up there. Uh, the kit didn't come with a new cable, but the cable I think is in good condition, in good enough condition. And then, of course, this lever. This lever swings up and, and pushes on that star wheel. Turns it so that it pushes the pads apart to keep them adjusted up to the brake drum. So first, I'm going to look at this brake cable. I'm looking at the fact that it latches in behind this arm. So I'm going to take that off. Maybe. There we go. And I'm just going to kind of look at the cable. You can see it's got a little wear right there. But there's no, like, frayed edges or anything. The ends look okay. There's a little wear right on there for whatever reason. But, I mean, it's completely usable. Um, next, I'm going to go ahead and take these other springs off. So I know I got two of these springs right here, or those white ones right up there. So I probably could reuse those. I mean, they look fine. I'm going to take the other one off. Now I notice on the other one, there's a plate underneath here. I'll show you once I take the spring loose. So the spring goes through this plate and then through that hole in the shoe and the plate lays and it has a groove in its back that that cable lays in and what it's doing is routing it around the outer edge of the shoe or the inner the outer edge of the inner side of the shoe whatever and uh yeah that spring i mean they're dirty they're pretty dirty but probably still good and then we got this bar i'm looking at the fact that the notch in it is up uh, I'm guessing the axle, it needs a little extra room there for the axle. So I'm going to take that out. All right. So I see the spring. It's got a notch on either end. I don't know if you can see, but one notch, I'll take the spring off. One notch is wider than the other. Uh, the spring goes on the end with the narrow notch and also with these shoulders. So I'm kind of making a note of that. And this spring... I don't know how you can see, but it's pretty, pretty rusty, pretty nasty. That one's garbage. We have our replacement spring, plus it's yellow, so it's a lot, a lot more fancy. Um, so our bar will go in there like so, spring will go on. And I've already done the other end, so I already know that for whatever reason, they put a, a bend in the spring right there where it sticks out. Uh, you don't want that to go in up. You want it to go in facing down because if it's up it can catch the boot on the cylinder the wheel cylinder on the axle so i'm gonna keep that in mind i'm gonna set the bar over here sorry about that all right then we're gonna go ahead and try to pull this apart oh okay so one more thing i'm seeing right now there's an arm well we'll get that in a minute we'll get to that in a minute so 
let me tip this up for you. So in the back, there's an arm uh, that the uh, e-brake cable goes on. So your e-brake cable hooks into this connection down here. Let me get where you can see. I'll flip it over. So your e-brake cable comes in from this direction, goes into that bracket, and then the, the end of the cable hooks in this little slot right there. You can see it. But that just sits in a notch right here in the top of the shoe. So you can just twist that. It comes out really easy, but you got to get it like just right to get it to go back in. So, so I don't forget this deal. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the new shoe. Like I say, you got to get it. There it goes. Just right. Uh, now I'd like to take this spring off right here. For that, usually I will use a pair of vice grips. Preferably the needle nose style vice grips work best, but I don't know what I did with my needle nose vice grips, so I'm going to use regular old pair of vice grips. Clamp it on. We'll see if I'm strong enough here. <laughs> All right. We'll just unhook one side. All right. Turn this back where you can see. So then that spring just unhooks. Yeah, that's what she looks like. Whatever. Garbage. Uh, then, of course, we've got the adjuster bolt here at the bottom. And you can see it's pretty dirty. It's been in there getting uh, getting brake dust on it. So on one end, you've got a small washer in there. So we're going to wire brush that, clean it up. But I need to remember to put that washer back in there. And then it'll get lubricated. Then on this end, of course, we'll clean those threads out and lubricate. An interesting thing on this style is if you look at it from the end, let me see if I can get it to focus, you'll see the, it might be, here I'll put my hand on it. You can see the teeth are angled as they go around, uh, kind of cut at an angle like a saw blade almost. So that's, I guess that's so that the, that the arm that hits against it, which we're gonna take off here in a second, is able to latch in better one direction but slide over the other direction so set that aside now this shoe is completely done it's got some brake material on it still you can see it's got some cracking i don't know how big a deal that really is but i'm sure it's not great this one same deal got some cracking this one's pretty thin i don't know if you can see on one side at least it's pretty thin um, but then this still has that lever on the bottom that is spring-loaded that runs that adjuster so to get that off we need to remove this spring uh, maybe you can see it there um, for that just a screwdriver usually you can get a screwdriver up under this side, I mean, it's an old spring. Uh, we don't have this for a replacement spring, so we will want to try to save it. So yeah, so they're just unlatched from that arm. Um, so then that arm should be free. Yep, the whole thing fell apart, but whatever. Uh, that pin came out, no big deal. Uh, but you can see we have the spring, the spring in the arm, so. Those we're going to reuse, so right off the bat, I'm going to get my wire brush and just kind of clean those up a little bit. Just like so. They're a little rusty, but it's mostly that brake dust. And then I'm going to clean that little spring a little, a little bit at least. Uh, just to make it a little less dirty. And that flat bar while I'm at it, I'm going to brush it just a little. 
Um, I have a can of brake clean here, but these parts are just going to get dusty again. So, so I don't think it matters. Uh, that little piece that the adjuster cable sits in, you can see like how dirty that groove is that it sits in. All that dust getting in there. Now this one I am actually going to spray some brake clean on. Because I'd actually like to get it cleaned up. I'm not a big fan of, of lubricating. Uh, the only things I'm planning to lubricate is this channel on the back so that it gets lubricated with the cable. And then I usually put a little bit of uh, grease on the back of this. So when I put it on the, the new pad, or the new shoe rather, um, it helps it stick in place because it doesn't have any way to fasten it. And I can tell you when you try to put that new spring in and, whoops, there we go. Uh, you put that new spring in and you're trying to pull on it up here. This wants to walk out sometimes. So it can help to have that grease on there just to help keep it stuck to the, the surface of the shoe. Um, but anyway, we'll get to that. All right, and then I'm gonna look at this cable. I'm just gonna brush it off a little bit. Just kind of get the dirt and dust off of it, I guess, more than anything. This end's a little bit rusty, but it's all just surface rust, so it's fine. It'll work. It'll work for one more round. Um, all right, so next is going to be cleaning up uh, this little star wheel adjuster. Um, I'm going to set these pads aside here. Since we're done with them, I'm move this up just a little. There we go. All right, so first I'm gonna take this end off. I'm gonna sit that washer down. I'm just gonna brush it. Just brush it clean a little bit. Um, I prefer to use dielectric grease for these. Um, I have used regular grease, like just grease gun, you know, wheel bearing grease. Uh, but wheel bearing grease has a tendency of getting pasty and the oil will come out of it. Oh, here's something else. So uh, this uh, set of shoes is for the left side of the axle. In the left side of the axle, this adjuster wheel turns the opposite direction. So it's a left-handed thread on that threading for the adjustment so you turn it to try and loosen it and it's like whoa, whoa, what it's not coming off so you just have to go the other way it's uh it's not complicated it's just a matter of training your brain to realize that right is what is it left lefty loosey righty tighty it's it's the opposite of that <laughs> whatever so we'll brush up this thing those dirt, those uh, threads have a lot of buildup on them, which is normal. It's normal because this is the part that always gets grease for sure, and that dust immediately clings to that lubricant. Oh, this actually has, I don't know if you can see it on camera, focus. Uh, it actually has a little grease on it. Oh, and it actually has an L marked on the end. I don't know if you can see to tell you that it's left-handed threads, which is kind of interesting. I mean, you can look at the thread pitch and figure it out, but it's good to know. Uh, one more piece to brush up here. I'll just kind of clean it up a little. Um, Drum brakes get a bad rep and a uh, bad rap, in my opinion. Uh, I love, I personally love drum brakes. Uh, most of the time, they're very maintenance free, and compared to traditional rotors. Um, but when you do have to work on them, it's more complicated. So I think that's why people, most people don't like it. But uh, anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna break clean it a little bit. Just get that dust off of there. 
Plus it gives me a chance to get that dust off of my hands because it gets dirty pretty fast. Spray off this one. It's a uh, AutoZone brake cleaner. Not a sponsor. AutoZone doesn't care about me. I joke, I don't mind AutoZone. They have good deals on some stuff. Uh, all right, so that's cleaned up. So, as I said before, I use uh, dielectric grease. I've got my tube all rolled up, but you can buy it. I think I got this on Amazon or, or eBay or one of those such places. But the, the dielectric grease doesn't typically uh, turn into a paste like like what the uh, like what traditional wheel grease would do. Just gonna blow it off a little bit. Make sure we don't have any brake. Make sure all that brake clean is out of there. All right, all right. So we'll start with this threaded uh, bolt. I guess maybe is the way to say it. I'm gonna get nasty here. This uh, this grease, in my opinion, this dielectric grease is even worse than wheel grease. You get a little bit on you, and the next thing you know, it's everywhere. So I'm gonna put a little in this tube, kind of try to get it on the sides of the tube. But I got another trick, so it's kind of just a glob in there. I'm going to take my nice handy dandy screwdriver and stick it in there and just kind of wobble it around. Try and get those threads lubed as well. Yeah, I mean it'll lube when you screw it. The, the bolt will help lube when you screw it together, but I don't know. I like, I like lubing both sides. Whatever. To each his own. So. Alright. Looks like it's going. Okay, lefty tidy, righty loosey. <laughs> See, I got it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to a little bit more. So, I'm going to go get that excess grease off. Lefty tidy, righty loosey. <laughs> so, I'm going to go. I know that it's probably to be adjusted correctly for the thickness of the pads because I did the other side. I know that probably in there somewhere as far as distance is probably where it needs to be, but I'm going to over tighten it. Whoops. I say over tighten it. Lefty tighty. <laughs> uh, because I want to show you guys how to adjust these from the, the back plate of the drum uh, in case you ever need to. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and put that that washer on this this other end or whatever right now, so I don't forget. I don't. I mean, I could put a little lube in there, but I don't think it's going to matter. Um, then we're going to put a little bit on the the male end, if you will. Just kind of smear it on there. Sorry, keep you in camera here. All right, and then a little bit in this tube. This one probably doesn't need as much. I'm just doing a little, little bit. Do my old screwdriver, screwdriver trick. Um, now I guess one possibly positive thing for wheel grease in this situation would be if you like because this is a tube that just goes all the way through like the whole length um, if you like pumped it full of grease and then put it together as that oil in the grease broke down <laughs> you can see there's a seal like it just it seals good enough that air is trapped in there oh but it's working its way out there we go anyway um, yeah you could fill it full of grease and as that oil came out of the grease, it would still kind of lubricate down through it. But I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of, of wheel grease for this kind of situation. All right. So 
Let's see what we got going on here with our shoe. So we're gonna put this in the bottom. So now, do I remember which side that adjuster arm goes on? Because keep in mind, that adjuster arm has to catch this and like turn it as it pulls. So I know I don't want the adjuster arm on the side with the threads, which is this side, I, because it'll push, it's attached to that shoe. So as the shoe moves, it'll disengage. And the angle on the teeth is wrong that way. I don't know if you can see. So I know I want it to be on this other side where the distance between here and here, the distance between the shoe essentially and, and the gear, I'll call it saw blade or whatever, is always the same. And then on my shoe, this, uh, this arm attaches on this pin. So I know uh, which side the arm goes on and I know which side, which direction I should say, orientation this is turned to. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in like so and like so. Well, you know what, actually, we're gonna do this on the arm. So uh, remember we have that spring that needs to go in there to hold it. So we are going to, here it is. We're gonna put that spring. So the spring goes first and it's gonna sit just like so, and hooks over top of that arm, but from the back, kinda like that, weirdly enough, or whatever, I don't know if you can see, uh, just like that. So, it does a whole twisty dance thing. Let me turn this where you can see better. There you go. So, spring first, whoops. Spring first, that bend right there hits the back of the shoe. There is room, but it's snug. And then the lever goes next, and you can see how it's notched. So it'll fit over the pin, and then it sits in a little slot. And then the spring gets pushed up over top. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna do this with a screwdriver. It'll be easier to see and easier to do. So it just snaps over. Sorry about my obnoxious dogs. And just like that. Well, <laughs> there. Just like that. All right, I'm gonna quit messing with it. It'll be fine. So then our, the other end of our adjuster sits in the notch underneath of it, uh, just like so. So now you can see it lines up with that wheel. And as it extends, uh, this distance won't get any more. This will, this will become more. Uh, all right, and then we have a replacement spring that goes across across oh. sorry I keep bumping into you guys so it sits in a I'll, I'll hook it in and I'll show you where it sits so yeah it just sits in two notches or two holes rather one on either side uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to pin one side I think this one so we're going to switch to the axle. Uh, you have these nails that come through from the back, and then there's a spring that sits over them. And then you have this little like cup looking nut. Uh, let me turn this so you can see. So that nut has like a notch in it, and that nail has a flat side, if you will. So it goes through that notch, and then you have to turn it. And these can be a bear to get on there, because you have to compress the spring while you're trying to turn it. I have a trick for that that I've found that works well. Oh, actually one note uh, with, with drum brakes. Um, you may notice uh, in the picture or in the screen, there's more material on this shoe than there is on this shoe. And it's close, I would say it's at least 30% more on this side or 30% less on that side, depending on your perspective. Um, the reason for that is uh, brake shoes, uh, drum brakes in general, uh, have a cylinder that sits up here and pushes the brakes apart into the drum, causing friction on this material. Well, the other thing that it does 
is it's only pushing against one spot up at the top. So when the cylinder pushes apart, this wants to turn. And when it does that, there's a pin right here in this middle that keeps it from like turning with the wheel. Um, well, that holds mostly on this side, which would be the back. So the wheel in normal drive, the wheel's turning this way. So when the cylinder pushes out and separates the pads, applying the brakes, it's more pushing this front one forward like this. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and what happens is the friction from this side against the drum actually drives the back one into the, the drum on this side. And all of the pressure of you braking is literally on that one pin in the very center at the top. Um, because of that, of course, more wear, more pressure is here and less pressure is here. So again, the wheel's going this way. So the whole thing wants to turn, but it can't. So it creates like a binding kind of sensation, uh, not sensation, binding kind of situation. And anyway, it's something interesting about drum brakes that I never knew until a few years ago. All right, so before we put the uh, shoes on, we are, we are going to change the brake cylinder, the wheel cylinder, wheel brake cylinder, whatever. Oh, I bought some genuine doorman wheel cylinders. Oh, there's part number if you're interested. I don't know. I'm not a big doorman fan necessarily, but I think they'll be fine for what I'm doing. Taking out the plastic. Here's what one looks like. All right, got your fittings. Got a bolt that'll go on either side from the from the back plate of the axle. Uh, your line will eventually go in there, and then on the top here, you have a bleeder valve. Voila, pretty simple. Um, so yeah, just two bolts. It didn't come with new bolts, so I'm just going to reuse my. I'm just going to reuse my old bolts. Um, wire brush them. I like to put blue Loctite in, on in these situations. Uh, not really so it stops it from backing out, uh, more so it keeps the moisture out of the thread so that if I come back later and change it, uh, hopefully they won't break off and I won't have to buy new bolts and I can reuse them a third time. Uh, but the cylinder sits in this hole right here. Um, something to note, uh, on some models, not this one, the bolts are completely opposite uh, of each other. They sit in the center of that circle instead of to one end or one side. Um, so you can actually change the orientation if you get a left or a right. Um, you want to watch out on the back. You just want to make sure that bleeder is on the top of the axle, not on the bottom. So you'll have the brake line down here and you'll have the bleeder on top so that when you're bleeding the air all the air rises and goes out the bleeder, not like that. So, think about that. Get this put in. I'm just gonna set it in place now. I'll get my blue Loctite, and we'll put some Loctite on these bolts. They're a little rougher than I remember. I think if it was my wife's car, something like that. I would be more concerned, but it's my my clunker. I'm not that worried about it. It's only the brakes. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Don't answer that. All right. Uh, mine take a 10 millimeter, but I mean, others vary, I'm sure. I should say my All-American Dodge takes a 10 millimeter. Torque to spec or whatever. I'm just gonna go snug. I feel pretty safe with that Loctite on there that they aren't just gonna back themselves out. And again, as you can see, the bleeder's on top and the line's in the bottom. So when you bleed it, the air will go this way through the cylinder and back out. 
We're also going to reinstall the brake cables. I'm actually changing this axle on my pickup with a parts axle with a different ratio. So we need the e-brake cables to be installed in order to put the shoes on. So we're gonna do that next. All right, so e-brake cables go through a hole in the back plate. Um, they don't have a nut on them, let me show you. So this is the end that's gonna go through that hole right there. Um, it just has these little, I don't know what you would call them, tabs, I guess, that stick out. So once you slide it through, it latches in there and those tabs hold it in. And then when you wanna take it out, it's kind of a bear to get all three of those to back up so you can pull the cable out. But anyway, push it through like this. It'll latch, oh yeah, before I forget, the cable also, there's there's a spring on the cable to retract the, the cable once you let your foot off of the e-brake, release the e-brake. Uh, but the spring, focus, spring for whatever reason has this notch on the side where they bend it out. Um, I think that clips inside to like keep the spring retained in place, but the hole is like barely the size that the spring is. So you gotta like kind of work it, work that leg through first. Yeah, this is a job for a screwdriver. All right, so we're going to kind of push that leg through first. Yeah, just like that. There we go. Let me show you on the other side now. There it's coming through the back this way, and then, then this is the hole where it's coming out of, and you have to go through this loop right here. Um, it just kind of retains it back away from the back of the, the drum or whatever, the moving parts, I guess. And then you just, uh, hang on, let me swing you back around back. Then you just push it on through. But like I said, make sure it's through that loop back here on the front. Otherwise you have to fight to get the thing back loose. And then you just push it in. You can hear it latch. So I like tug on a little bit, it's not going anywhere. So now we're gonna hook the arm on the shoes to the end of that e-brake cable. There's a, a, that spot I was talking about where the spring sticks off. Actually it gets used to hold the spring and onto the actual uh, arm here. So from what I see, I don't know how well you guys will be able to see it. I'm trying to get that arm to hook around this and then get this cable to drop in. So we'll see how well that works. No, oh, yeah, that's not bad. And then yeah, the cable goes through just like so, easy peasy. All right, and our next thing is gonna be that nail and the spring and that nut. So here's what I came up with. I use a pair of vice grips and preferably a newer pair of vice grips that still has good teeth on it. And I'll go on that first large tooth on either side of the jaw. So I'll put that nut in there. I don't know if you can see very well. Just like so on that first tooth. Then I'll adjust them so it's like pretty much barely squeezing because you don't want to get crazy or you'll end up crushing that, that nut. But that's enough that you can still see where the, the, the what the orientation of that nail is uh, while you're pressing it on. And usually you can work, you can either turn this side or turn the nail and get it to go. So, we'll see what we can do here. Let me sit these shoes up and over, kind of get them roughly where they need to be. Mm -hmm. More or less like that. So there's a hole in the back 
that comes through. It's being difficult. We're gonna tighten up that e-brake cable just a little. I think the slack is, I think the slack in the e-brake cable is messing with me with that arm getting in the way. There we go. All right. Get our spring. We're going to get to do this left-handed, so that'll be exciting. So I try to look and either have the orientation of that slot up and down or this way so I can look at the vice grip and figure out where it's at in case I can't see. So I'm going to push it down this way with the orientation flat. Like so. And yeah, it's there somewhere. There we go. Yeah, just like that. Relatively easy. And the top on these Dodges has almost like a Batman sing uh, symbol looking piece. So I looked before I took it off to make sure I didn't get it upside down. So it looks like this where it has like, you know, it looks like Batman symbol or whatever. So that needs to go up here at the top. Just like so. Yeah. And then in front of that is going to be that cable. Um, when we hook this cable, we want it to be behind that arm at the bottom. So we need the spring to hook out, not, not in or whatever. So that'll go on there. Just like so. And next we're gonna lubricate this little cable guide. Just a little bit, don't have to get too crazy. And then I put some on the back. Like I said, it just kind of helps it stick to the, to the shoe in there. Sorry if I'm sticking my head in the camera, but I can't see. There we go. All right. This is the toughest one. Um, so you get your spring in there. Just like so. And then we'll pull that spring. So I got kind of a trick with this. Uh, let me change your position. Lift you guys up a little bit so you can see better. Uh, this spring is... The spring is really strong. You're not gonna pull it by hand, even with the vice grips on there. So I put the vice grips on. Well, try to put the vice grips on. Come on now. There we go. I'm, I'm putting them down a little bit like this. I got it too tight, here we go, yeah. Um, like I said, keeping that plate in there is a bear. All right. And then I can pull them past the end of the shoe, like so. And then I get a big screwdriver, and I'm prying them out against the shoe. I'm sure you can't see anything. Hang on. Uh, let me change your angle. All right, we're going to try again. We got it this time, I think. Famous last words. Come on. Come on now. Ugh. You can do it. Where is that close? All right, there we go. Ugh. All right. Next, we're going to do that e-brake, or I'm sorry, adjustment cable. Um, normally, you would think hook it over top of that, that uh, I'll call it bearing. Give it a little tappy. <laughs> and then hook the spring on the bottom 
but I can tell you from doing the other side, trying to do it that way, the easiest way, is to hook this on the arm down here first. Like so. And then you push the arm all the way up, that gives you enough slack with a screwdriver. You can fish in there and get that cable over. That's the easiest way I found. All right, we're gonna put that flat plate in. I'm just gonna pull this shoe back and latch it over the back plate back here so it stays out of the way. And then that'll give me enough room to fish it through. The wide groove goes first because it's got that e-brake arm and the shoe to go over. And then I'm gonna try to hold that, get you guys in focus. Yeah, this might be a little tricky. Hold that and guide it in there. I don't know how much you can see, but maybe a little screwdriver work. Get her just right. Oh, no, she was good. I'm going to do this other spring on the top next. It goes in this hole on this end. And up, and then just needs to be pulled up. I mean, famous last words. That one was pretty easy, actually. I think I'm, well, yeah. She was all out of its notch. Alright. Next is the nail with the spring. Feed that through. Just trying to figure out about where square is. Alright. is up so we'll fight that through come on now this really is the easiest way I've found to get these to go I'm sure they probably sell a tool specifically for that but you do what you got to do to get by and make it work and that's kind of what it looks like all put together. I'm going to reuse some used drums. Uh, the ones I had were getting pretty deep. Like you could feel the difference at the edge, like the offset, like how worn in they were. Uh, these have some rust on that outer edge. I don't know if you can see, but they're barely noticeably worn in, a couple thousandths or something probably. So I'm just going to wire wheel it. And then we're going to brake clean it out a little bit, just kind of wash all that brake dust out of there watch your eyeballs all right i think we're pretty much good to go like i can barely feel that there's a little bit of a lip, ever so little. All right, so put the drum on. It's uh, nice and sloppy, like I can feel side to side, it's slopping around. Uh, normally you would adjust that wheel a little bit tighter and you want, would want it to where you can barely slide the drum on. Um, but we're gonna keep it loose. I want to show you how to tighten up that wheel on the back. So the kit came with a new replacement 
uh, rubber plug that goes in the back plate covers the hole you can do the adjusting with I'm gonna pop out the old one which I painted over I mean honestly it's reusable but we got a new one so we'll try to get you to look through I've got a light see if I can kind of shine it on that that wheel in there you can kind of see so then you can use a screwdriver get in there into the wheel and pry it one way or the other to snug it or or loosen it you can just barely see it I mean there just is enough room to get in there they make a special tool but most people just use screwdrivers the the tool is a little bit wider than the end of a screwdriver so it's easier to keep it in there and find it you know locate the the sprocket um, but a screwdriver works fine all right so we're going to try to adjust this the easiest way in this situation would be just to take the drum off but i want to show you roughly how long it takes to adjust kind of feel your way back in there all right we'll try that eh, still a little bit loose okay you got to be careful because it'll go from loose to too tight to get on and three clicks eh, still a little loose So I'm only going about three notches at a time. Yeah, we're gonna try more notches because I'm impatient. There, that was four. That's more, right? <laughs> Still a little sloppy. Um, it'll adjust itself over time, which is why that arm's in there. But those first few, uh, half dozen or so, maybe dozen times you stop not having brakes in the on the back axle. Don't want to go running into somebody. Nobody wants that. Okay. See, now it's pretty snug. I'm going to put the drum on the rest of the way. And now we're going to go because I know it's getting close. Now we're gonna go till I can feel them start to drag a little bit. Yeah, good so far. Mm -hmm. So, we're getting there. I didn't realize I backed it off so far. Man, we're still pretty loose. We're gonna go a couple turns. Maybe we'll go three. Oh, see, I can feel they're starting to drag a little bit right now. We're gonna go one or two more. Yeah, there we go. I can just feel it, that they're starting to drag a little bit on the on the drum. We're gonna stop right there. I think that's perfect. All right, and the only thing left to do is put in the new rubber stop, uh, rubber plug in the back. I, let's see. I'm gonna put just a little bit of uh, grease on it just so that later on if I want to pull it back out to do some adjusting or whatever it'll come out easy plus it helps go in there a little easier right <laughs> probably a joke in there somewhere all right that takes care of that uh, the only thing left to do is try to get the axle in the truck at some point and actually put wheels on it but once we get down the road, we should have some good brakes now. Hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm always surprised when I stumble upon a YouTube creator who has millions of subscribers and has been producing videos for years. 
completely unknown to me. I would like to help correct this issue by giving some of my favorite creators a shout out during my videos. To that end, I would like to take this opportunity to spotlight one of my fellow YouTube creators, someone I personally subscribe to. If you find my content interesting, please consider going down to the video's description and follow the link I have placed there. The link will take you to today's chosen creator. But for now, please stay tuned for any bloopers related to this video. Thank you, everyone. Spring. So the spring goes first, and it's going to sit just like so. Um, let me pull this arm back out. So it'll sit over the arm like, like that. Uh, I'm trying to remember if it's set on top. For some reason... Hmm, I got myself mixed up now. See, this is why you take pictures. Um, I know this little bend in it sits against the shoe, so I know its orientation, the spring's orientation, I should say, with that little bend, goes against the shoe back in here. Um, I thought that it went behind, but no, nah, that doesn't look like it's going to work. <laughs> so it must have been in the front, like so. So, no, that can't be right either. I'm getting myself mixed up here. Hmm. Well, I'm going to think on that for a second. Stand by.